Our whole life is not just one large season, but there's gonna be so many different seasons that we go through in life, and that's something that I personally have had to learn along this journey that we call life. And my mom has been the one who always reminds me of it because I used to like to be the person who did everything. I still like to, I, I aspire to be that person, but there's different things that limit you as you get older. And my mom would just have to keep telling me, Ashley, it's just a season. Ashley, it's just a season. Soon you'll be able to do this. Or Ashley, it's just a season. You won't have as much stuff going on. And I think about one example that I could think about is I used to, I never had a curfew really. I had a curfew from February to September and it was the month I started dating Mike until I turned 18. Those were like the however many months that is that I actually had a curfew. Other than that, I didn't have a curfew because we just hung out with church people all the time and we were just kind of hanging out and watching movies or just doing stupid stuff. And I started singing at the church at like age 17 on the main stage and we used to have three services. So we had to be there at 7.45 in the morning. And I literally remember, like, we would stay out so late. Like, Friday night, they had 5529. I don't even think it closed till, like, 2 in the morning. And then we would go to the Rams horn afterward and just hang out. And, like, I would get home at, like, 4.30 in the morning, not even think about it, and then have to beat a dance at, like, 8 in the morning. And it was just, like, easy peasy. Well, in addition to that, on Saturdays, I remember this one time we like all were at our friend's house watching a movie. I don't know, watching a movie or watching a fight or I don't even know, something on TV. And like, we kind of just like fell asleep and all of us were, I mean, sleeping and hanging out. And it was like 6.30 in the morning and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta be at a church in like an hour. And at that time I was like, I think I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Cause my dad wakes up at like four on Sunday mornings. So I remember I just got home and I was like, sorry, I just kind of fell asleep, but I'm just gonna get changed and go to church. So I would do that, and my life was just in the season of I could live off like two, three hours of sleep. All of a sudden, I was asked to be the worship leader, and I was like, you know what? I need to change the season that I'm in because I, well, at first I didn't change it. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. At first I would still just hang out till as late as I wanted. And then all of a sudden I realized I was coming to church and I was like, man, I really can't give my best or I can't give my everything or I can't give my whole heart or I can't give my whole mind because I'm so tired. And I had to give myself a bedtime. My, my bedtime was 11 o'clock. And if you know me or have hung out with me, you know that I was like, if we're going to do something, I have to go out to eat here. I have to go to a movie here because I have to be in bed by 11 o'clock because I have to give my whole heart tomorrow. I have to give my whole mind tomorrow. And that was just another season that I went into. And then I had a kid. And then the next season that I went to is I have to be in bed by like 8.30 or 9 o'clock. I still sleep till the same time. That's the funny thing. Like, it's not like I'm waking up earlier. I just need more sleep. But all that to say is there's just different seasons in life that we go through. Some of the seasons are planned. Like I said, hey, the season of my life, I have to give myself a bedtime. Most of the time what happens with seasons in our life is God's taking us through a specific season and there's not much we can do about it because the season just happens and we have to learn to adjust or we have to learn to go through that season. We have to learn to trust God through that season, season and we just have to realize that all these different kind of seasons are going to happen in our life, just like we read in this opening scripture. There's a time to laugh, there's a time to cry, there's a time to sow, there's a time to reap. All these different things are gonna happen in our life. And in 1 Timothy 4, two to five, it says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, Convince, rebuke, exhort all with long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Again, just like natural seasons happen, there's kind of a preparation that has to go into the changing of a season. For instance, us. The other day I was driving down the road and it was rainy out and I was going around a curve. I don't think I was going very fast and my car just started sliding because our tires are so bald that I just was like sliding and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna slide into the other room. The other room. I was driving in a house. No, I was actually on Brown Road. So anyway, a normal sign of preparation would be, okay, winter's coming, it's going to be icy, we're probably going to need new tires on our car, right? That would be like the natural thing to do to prepare for the winter season coming, 
coming. What is going on in my mind? The winter season coming is there's this natural preparation that has to happen. I, for one, like to be prepared, but in the sense of, okay, this would be a great example. Talking to Christina, we're both pregnant. I like to be prepared as in knowing what I'm going to have because I like to be the kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm having a boy, so this has to be this color or this has to be this size or this has, right? That's like the natural way you're able to prepare, but they're not finding out what they're having. So they can prepare only as much as they can for not knowing what they're going to have, right? So that's kind of like walking in the season of the Lord is you can prepare only as much as you can because you don't really know what that next season is. Even though you know the season may change, you may not know what it is but you can still prepare for that. So again, it means fulfilling our ministry and walking and everything that God has for us because we have to realize that even if we don't feel prepared in a natural sense, when you're walking in everything that God has for you, he's preparing you in the spiritual sense. In Psalms 46, 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. See, again, as with the natural seasons, we're going to go through different seasons as well. And as we read in the opening scripture, again, a time for this, a time for that, a time for this, a time for that. And I only read up to scripture 8 to show you that there's always going to be different times in our life. Again, a time for weeping, a time for joy, a time for this, a time for that. There's so many seasons. But one thing I do know is sometimes God takes us through a season and the season is you need to be still. That to me is probably one of the hardest things to do is to go through a season where I have to be still because like I said, I like to know what's coming up so I can prepare the best way is possible. I love to be prepared. I love doing things. I love, I mentioned one time, I don't know if it was here at the main church, but like we'll drive home from service on a Wednesday night and I'll be like, okay, Mike, as soon as we pull in, you'll go out this door, you'll grab Lael from that side, I'll grab the diaper bag, we'll go in, you take her out of the car seat, I'm gonna make the bottle, then you take, and he's like, I don't think we need a plan for this. (laughs) Like it's even small things like that that I like to plan for. But in a season when God says, you need to be still, that can be a hard thing when you like to plan for things. So I think of, when I think of the story, or when I think of being still as a season, I think of the story of Mary and Martha. Because Mary just was sitting there, and Martha's going about being busy, and she's like, hey, what is she doing? She's not even preparing. And and Jesus is like, chill out, man. Word for word verbatim, like that's what Jesus said. Chill out, man. When he was talking to... (laughs) But I think about that. She was so busy being busy. And a lot of times what we are, we're so busy being busy that we miss out on everything that God can do in our life because we get so busy being busy. Busy can be a good thing, but busy can be so distracting and we can get so busy being busy. And a lot of times when I say busy being busy, a lot of times our busy is being busy in the church. Does that sound like a riddle or something to you? Or what's it called? Uh, How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a wood could, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) But I'm talking about being busy because a lot of times we feel like when I'm busy in the church or if I'm busy doing ministry stuff, that's okay. But we can get so busy being busy that we miss out on everything that God has for us, whether or not your busyness is happening in the church or not. Sometimes we have to go through that chill season. We have to go through the season that allows God to work in us because if we're going about our lives trying to do everything, we're not leaving room for God to do his part. It says, be still and know that I am God. But if we're so busy and we're so caught up on trying to get everything done and make lists and be prepared and fill up 24-7 with our day of being busy, there's no room to let God be God in our life. Because if we take complete control over a situation, how is God going to reveal himself in that situation? If we're searching for peace and we're looking in all these different areas except for being still and letting God's peace fall upon us, we're never going going to be able to be still and know that he is God. 
So sometimes there's a season that we have to be still, a season that we have to just chill out, a season that just says, God, even though I want to take control over this situation, God, I'm going to relax and I'm going to let you do whatever you need to do in me. And it's in those moments that we allow him to work in us that we will experience who he is. If you have a relationship with someone, whether it be a mom, whether it be a friend, whether it be a sibling, boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever it may be, and you're always controlling that situation, if you're always making choices for that person and you're not, never allowing their voice to be heard or never allowing their input, you're never going to really get to know them. You're never going to really get to be able to trust them to the full extent because you're taking over everything. And a lot of times we do that with God. We just take over and we want to rule those situations. And because I know for me, it's very easy because I like to be in control and I don't like when things go out of control. But it's in that moment that it's like, wow, if I could just chill out, right? If I could allow God to work in this situation, how many of you know he knows us better than we even know ourselves? He knows what we need. And a lot of times if we say, Lord, I need joy, we think we're going to know where to find that joy at. Or God, I need peace. And we think we know where we're going to be able to find that peace. So we keep searching and searching and searching and finding these temporary fixes. And he says, if you would have just been still, if you were just still, and you could know that I'm God because I will be able to give you the peace that you need that will really give you peace. I'll be able to give you the joy that is a complete satisfaction, not just that temporary satisfaction. But if we never let go of that control over our life, if we never have that season of being still, we're never going to be able to fully experience God, this is who you are. You're the almighty God. God, you're the source of my peace. God, you're the source of my rest. God, you're the source of restoration. God, whatever it is that you may need in your life, he wants to be that for you. So even though there may be a season that we have to be prepared, there's also seasons that we go through that we need to rest, that we need to be still. And in James 1, 2 to 6, it says, my brethren, crown it all joy, When you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Sometimes... There's, I have over this the season of growing because sometimes when we think of growing, we think of just that, growing. I don't like plants whatsoever. I, I think they're beautiful. I, however, don't want to take care of them. I look at other people's yards and I just see these beautiful flowers blooming. And I'm like, ooh, that's amazing. I want that. So I go to Wojo's and get these plants, flowers, whatever it may be. I plant them in my yard and I do absolutely nothing with them. And I'm like, why do my neighbors have these amazing peonies and mine look like poop? Like what is going, they're just like these crusty, like they're like breaking off, flying across the yard. My mom's like, when's the last time you watered these? I'm like, you told me these would come back every year. She's like, well, obviously you have to like, prune them and you have to water them and you have to and I'm like what just to get this thing to grow like I have to do all this crap I can't even take them out I don't want anything in my yard (laughs) like but sometimes we think of the season of growing we think of the positive side of just looking at your neighbor's yard and seeing these flowers grow we don't think of all the work that goes into the season of growing we especially Don't think of the pain that is associated with growing. How many of you know that to grow, typically there's pain? In the season of growing, it's to go through these trials so we can become everything that God has called us to be. There are going to be so many different seasons in our life that we're taken through, but instead of trying to jump to the next season, we need to embrace the time that God has placed us in and say, Lord, what is it that you need from me 
in this season? God, how can my heart be softened in this season? God, how can my mind be opened in this season? God, how can in this season I can start seeing things the way that you see things? Because Lord, I don't want to see things the way that I used to see. In Philippians 3, 12 to 14, it says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There's two parts of the scripture I want to go over. The first one, it says, forgetting those things which are behind me. In order to move forward, we cannot let the past hinder us from moving forward. We cannot let the past hold us back. Whether it be past mistakes, whether it be the good old days, we cannot let things hold us back from moving forward past mistakes repent Jesus forgives you move on it seems like it would just be as easy as that but sometimes we've done something in our past that impacted us so much that even though we know Lord I've asked for your forgiveness God you forgive me I know I want to move on it still holds us back Tonight is the night to say, Lord, I don't want to let my past hold me back anymore. Lord, I don't want it to hold me back from becoming everything that you've called me to be. God, I want to press forward. I don't want my past mistakes to hold me back. I don't want my past thoughts to hold me back. I don't want the hardness of heart that I used to have in the past to hold me back. But Lord, I'm going to press forward in you. We cannot let our past hold us back. The other thing is I said the good old days. Because typically we think of the good old days as the good old days. But in reality, when you were walking in that season, it was just like any other season. It was just like any other year. But then you grow up and you become 30 and you look back and you're like, man, when I was 22 and I was doing this, life was awesome. You were in shape, like all, (laughs) yeah, you know. Life happens, but you look back and you look back at being 20, like if someone's like, what was your favorite year? I just was like, man, I loved being 22 and I loved, I was traveling all the time. And, but in the moment of doing all that stuff, it was just like any other year. But all of a sudden things change and life changes and you look back and you take that year and you put it up on a pedestal and you start talking about the good old days. Yeah, remember when this used to happen or remember when I was this or this or remember when, whatever it may be in your life, we can't let the good old days hold us back because if we keep looking to what we could have done when I was this age or if we could keep looking back to what I should have done or the choice that I should have made you didn't make the choice so move on it says reach forward to those things which are ahead reach forward but if we're constantly reaching back at what we used to have we can't be reaching forward you can try to do both but you're going to become stagnant because if you're reaching back and reaching forward, you're never going to move. I don't want to be 50 years old saying, man, I wish when I was 31, I would have just pressed towards the call that God had for me. I wish that when I was 31, I would have lived in that moment and said, God, I want to live everything, every single part that you have for me, God. But I was so stuck looking back, or I was so stuck in the moment, or I was so stuck here or there. We have to press forward. We can't look back and hold on to things of the past, but we need to press forward. And that's the season to move forward. Again, there's, can I have the musicians come forward? There's so many seasons in our life. Don't hold on to one season and wish you could go back to that season, but embrace every season that God has for you. Embrace every thing that God has for you because he knows the season that you need to be in. And the season that you're in may not be the season that the person next to you is in. That's okay. We don't all have to be in that same season. Now, obviously, we're all going to be in the same season that God is specifically in, obviously. 
But God might be taking you through something that says, I need you to be still in the person next to you. I need you to press forward. I can't press forward. I could try if that's what the season is that God has for someone else. But he says, Ashley, I've called you to be still. And to live in the season that God has for you, you have to be so in tune with his voice because you can't just say, well, what works for Billy is gonna work for me. I mean, he's a pastor. Life seems pretty good, so I'm sure whatever he's doing is working out great for his life. But every one of you has a different life. I have a different life than you, and we're all gonna be in different seasons. So we can't look to each person. Now it's great to learn from other people, but we have to be so in tune that says, Lord, what do you have for me? God, is this a season that I'm supposed to be preparing for something that I may not even know what is to come? God, is this a season that I need to be still and just stop being busy, being busy? God, is this a season for me to grow? Is it a season for me to have growing pains? In the same season, you might have growing pains and then you start seeing the fruit. Or God, is this a season for me to press on? In Ecclesiastes 3 to 1, it says, to everything, there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Every season that you go through has a purpose. Don't look at one as greater than the other or one as lesser than the one that you just went through. Every season has a purpose. God's teaching you something. God's showing you something. God's changing your heart. God's changing your mind. God's opening your eyes. Whatever it may be, realize that every season has a purpose. And God takes us through many seasons for many different reasons and you may not know that reason. You may feel like you're in a place right now that says, I don't even know what season this is because I just feel like crap. I just feel like I'm in a dry season. I just feel like I'm in a season where I have no one around me that understands what I'm going through. Why would God take me through this? There's a reason. There's a purpose for that. I may not know, but God knows. So the only thing we can do in seasons like that is say, Lord, what do you want to show me? God, who do you want me to become? Lord, I'm going to press on. Lord, I'm going to fulfill the call that you have on my life no matter what. Even if it's a season of being still, God, I'm going to fulfill that call. Even if it's a season of growing or being prepared, being still, moving forward, God, I'm going to press toward that call. And our heart attitude has to be, again, Lord, what is it you have for me? Because I want it all.